Most high shall bring thee into Egypt again. Bring with you ships. into slavery again with what? With ships. With what? With ships. With ships. Then we come in slavery on ships. That's right. Read. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. Is that the way Moses said it was going to happen? That's the way it happened. Read. Thou shalt see it no more again. Have we ever seen our homeland again? Do we even know where we're from? That's right. We know. Read. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. No, your friend. Your enemy. So God said, once you get off the boat, you're going to be sold to your enemies. Who was we sold to? So who was our enemies according to the Bible? Have they, have they not That's proven right. that they are enemies? In 2023, don't they still prove that they are enemies? So that's true. your host of WLOZ, Bunya Howada, Bunya Sharam. Hop him over there at WLOZ that came with another smash hit. What would you gain if you lose your soul? What does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? I'd rather live my life like Job, Lord, refine me in the furnace till I'm pure like gold from out the concrete who arose. What does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? I'd rather live my life like Job, Lord, refine me in the furnace till I'm pure like gold. The truth is written, it was never sold. There was a man in the land of ooze whose name was Job. Very wealthy, blessed, and healthy with a soul pure as gold. Couldn't find another man like him, cause he was perfect and never sinned. The reason why the devil didn't like him, so he asked the Lord, could he test him? The only reason why he loyal to you, cause you blessed him. So he gave him over. Now Satan happy that he taking over. Trying to convict him, had the power to do everything but kill him. Now Job never seen it coming. Took all his riches and his cattle, he was left with nothing. But he never fold. He bless your Howard and he kept his soul. Cause he was loyal even though he started breaking out with boils. You know what I'm saying? Give me Colossians 3.17. The book Colossians chapter 3 and verse 17. Come on. Whatsoever you do in word or deed, right? You are in the name of Adam one your house, shall giving thanks to your house and the Father by him. So whatever we do in word or deed, meaning whatever we speak. I actually we do it all in the name of the most high God and the Son. Like I always say, we walk this walk and we talk this talk. So now, let's go into the scripture. Give me uh, Deuteronomy 4 and 2. We're going to go into the scriptures and deal with how God say we should minister the word. Or how do we deliver the word. Hey there, King. What's your name? What's your name? King. What's your name? King. Your name King? Yeah. Oh, praise uh, the Lord. Okay. Okay. What's your nationality? Uh, African-American. You're African-American? All right, I was told that once before. Could I, if you got a second, if I can teach you your two ideas. That's a second, my brother. Do you believe in the Bible? Yeah. Do you believe in the Bible? Yeah. All right, so give me a, uh, real quick, give me a uh, Deuteronomy 1 and 1. Let me show you something real quick. You know anything about the Bible? You know about Moses, splitting the Red Sea, yeah. all that stuff? Yeah. All right, all right. So we're going to go into that a little bit and show you something real quick. Because I'm going to show you your identity according to the Bible. Because if you look into the Bible, you ain't going to see African American. All right? Read. But we do the running chapter 1 and verse 1. Come on. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. To who? To all Israel. So Moses is speaking to the children of Israel. When Moses parted the Red Sea, the children of Israel walked out of Egypt and got out of abundance. You all right? Give me Deuteronomy 28, 15. Now we're going to play a process of elimination real quick. You know how that is, right? You know how that game goes, process of elimination. Meaning, I'm going to read some scriptures, and we're going to see what nation of people do it bear witness with. Okay? Read that. Over to Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. Read a little louder. But it shall come to pass. Meaning it's going to happen. It's through the prophecy. Read. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Most High thy power. So God was talking to the children of Israel. He said, if you don't hearken, meaning if you don't want to listen, read. To observe to do all his commandments. He said, if you don't listen and do all my commandments, read. And his statutes, come on. which I command thee this day, read. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So God told the children of Israel, if y'all don't listen to me and do my commandments, that all these curses are going to come upon you and overtake you. Now the question is, is a curse a good thing or a bad thing? That's right. A curse is a bad thing. Now I'm going to give you the first curse. Read that up. Cursed shall thou be in the city. What do he say? Cursed shall thou be in the city. Read. 
and cursed shall thou be in the field. So one of the first curses God placed on the children of Israel for breaking this commandment, he said, curse shall you be in the city, and curse shall you be in the field. Now, remember I said the game of process of elimination, right? Now, when you go through the cities, you have been through the cities, in the cities, you have been through Miami. All right, who's living in the worst conditions in those cities? Who is on the bottom? Who's living in poverty? Who's living in drug infested neighborhoods? Who? Right. He said, curse should you be in the city. All right, is the Chinese man living in the city cursed? How about the white man? Is he living in the city cursed? So God said, curse should you be in the city. Read. Curse shall thou be in the field. And curse shall you be in the field. What field was cursed in? Who's cursed in the cotton field? That was a curse God placed on us for breaking this commandment. He said, you're going to be cursed in the city and cursed in the field. Drop the 32. Shalom, Ed, how you doing? Too. Uh -huh. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Now another curse he placed oh, on us. Brothers. Shalom, King. Oh, okay. He said, your sons and your daughters shall be given unto another people. What do you mean by that? Your sons and daughters will be given to another people. What that sound like? Uh, right, right. You hear that long head. Meaning 100, 200 sold of Master Johnson. Because why? We was given to another people through slavery. You know what I'm saying? They'll get your family and sell them to a man in Georgia well. and sell your daughter to a man in uh, Mississippi. God said, your sons and daughters should be given unto another people. Read. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. Meaning, he said, your eyes gonna look at them and fail longing for them all the day long. And meaning what? When they was taken out children and daughters from us, it's nothing we could do. We just look at them and our eyes fail with longing for them all the day long. Come on. And there shall be no might in thine hand. And he said, you ain't gonna have no might in your hand to get them back. We couldn't do nothing. We ain't have no military might to get them back. We ain't have no economic might to get them back. We couldn't do nothing to get our children back. When they took us in slavery, it was nothing that we could do. Read. Drop the uh, 48. 47. Verse 37. Come on. And thou shalt become an astonishment. Now for breaking God's commandments, he said you're going to become an astonishment. Meaning when people see you, they're going to be astonished at you. Just like you see our men walking around with their pants down, the other people be astonished by that. You know what I'm saying? We out there fighting in the streets over shoes and, and, and you stepped on my shoe. People be astonished by that. Our women walk around with green and purple and orange hair in their head. People are astonished by that. You know what I'm saying? That's, a, that's an astonishment. Read. A proverb. A proverb. A proverb is a wise saying. Like, you heard it before. Uh, Niggas love to eat watermelon. You heard that before? Yeah. Niggas love to eat chicken, right? Yeah. That's a wise saying. A proverb. You know what I'm saying? Another wise saying is a, a, a elevator could raise a family, but a black man can't. You know what I'm saying? Those are wise sayings. You know what I'm saying? The black man lazy. You know what I'm saying? He don't like to work. He don't take care of his family. Those are why I saying. Read on. And a byword. And a byword. A byword has been called after your God given nationality. Now, when you walked up, you say you was an African American. Now, do you know those two words, the sin from two white men? Hey, Ariel, use your phone up and pull up a, a miracle vest music and Leo giving your avocado. Read on. Among all nations, whether the most high shall lead thee. He said, where we lead us, we're going to become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword. Drop them for the eight. Watch this. Verse 48. Come on. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemy. Remember what I told you. God said for breaking this commandment now, you're going to have to serve your enemy. Watch this. Read. Which the most high shall send against thee. Read that part again. Which the most high shall send against thee. God sent an enemy against us for breaking this commandment. He said, I'm going to make you serve that enemy for breaking this commandment. Read. And hunger. And hunger, meaning when you get something to eat, who you go to to get food? Who owned the store? Who is the owner more than likely? I'm saying, who is usually be? Right. He said, you're going to serve your enemies in hunger when you want food, right? Read. And in third. And in third, if you want a beer to drink, who you got to go and get it from? White man. Who you pay your water bill to? White man. God said, you're going to serve your enemy in the one of all things. Read. And in nakedness. And in nakedness means your clothes. I see you got, you got on some nikes. Who own that? Who? I guess the Come, you, you guess. Be, be honest with yourself, yeah. brother. Who own it? No, I mean. All right. You see what I'm saying? What, how about your shawl? What the meal there? 
Where you get them from? You get them from your people? Who you bought them from? Hey, who owned that? Right, he said you're going to serve your enemies in the one of all things. See how the Bible is so true? Now, if the Chinese man read that, can he relate with that? How about the white man? If he read that, can he relate with that? But you can relate with it, can you? Because what God said, you're going to serve your enemy in the want of all things. Read, watch this. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. What God said our enemy is going to do to us for breaking his commandment? And, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. He said he's going to put a yoke of iron upon your neck. That was prophesied over 5,000 years ago when Moses was talking to the children of Israel. So if Moses talking to the children of Israel and all those things happen to us as a people, the black, Hispanic, and Native American, who must we be? Who are we? Say it again. If God was talking to the children of Israel and all those things happened to the children of Israel, slavery, ropes of iron around your neck. Children of Israel, right? right. Okay, then who are we? Israel. That's right. right. Uh, See that? All praise it. Give them more around the applause. And we are the children of Israel. This is our God-given identity. That's right. You're not a black man because your parents are black. Are you the same color as your parents? No. What color are you really are, brother? Okay then, see that? So why we fall for the lies that people teach us? You got a point. Right, you know? And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. So that's true. God say, for breaking his commandments, you want to serve your enemy and he's going to put yoke of iron upon your neck. Come on. Until he have destroyed thee. Now we're destroyed. Now we call ourselves a black man. An African American. Negro. Nigger. Jigaboo. Spook. We call ourselves all these names. You know what I'm saying? We've been called out our God-given nationality. Uh, 54. Verse 54. Come on. So that the man that is tender among you. Right. And very delicate. Come on. His eyes shall be evil towards his brother. His eyes going to be what? Evil towards his brother. One of the curses God placed on us for breaking his commandments. He said, I'm going to make your eyes evil toward my, your brother. Meaning what? Nigga, what you looking at? Nigga, what set you from? That's your eyes being evil towards your brother. That's right. That's black on black crime right there in the Bible. That's one of the curses God placed on us for breaking his law, statutes, and commandments. You know what I'm saying? Read on. His eyes shall be evil toward his brother. Read. Really? And toward the wife of his bosom. Toward his wife of his bosom. Now, ain't the so-called black man and the black woman known to be fighting a lot in the house? You see a lot of domestic violence around our neighborhood, don't you? Right. Read on. And toward the wife of his bosom, right? And toward the remnant of his children. Now, which toward he shall the remnant of his children, should, he's gonna do what? Which he shall leave. Now, who is known for leaving their children? Did you grow up with your father now? See that? Right. You fit that curse right there. Mm, right. Yeah. You fit that curse right there, and a lot of our people fit that curse. One of the curses God placed on us is that we have fatherless households. Mm -hmm. Is not that true? So, are, are not we the children of Israel? That's right. We God chosen people. You know what I'm saying? Let me show you something else too. How did we get over in America as a people? Do uh, what? Ships. Say that again? Ships. Read that. This was prophesied in the Bible that this would happen. I didn't write this book. You didn't write this book. Read that. Book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. Come on. And the most high shall bring thee into Egypt again with ship. With what? With ship. With what? With ship. Now Egypt, give me Exodus 22, because the Bible is its own definition. It gives you the definition. So I'm gonna show you what Egypt means, then we're gonna go right back to that verse again. You know what I'm saying? Because I gotta explain to you what it's talking about. Because you just read Egypt, you ain't gonna know what it's talking about. But the Bible tells you what Egypt means. Read that. Book of Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. Come on. I am the most high thy power. Right. Which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Out of the land of Egypt, brother. Out of the house of bondage. Out of what? Out of the house of bondage. So Egypt means bondage. Bondage is synonymous with captivity and what? Slavery. See that? Most high shall bring thee into Egypt again. Bring with you ships. into slavery again with what? With ships. With what? With ships. With ships. Did we come in slavery on ships? That's right. Read. By the way of I spake unto thee. That the way Moses said it was going to happen, that the way it happened. Read. Thou shalt see it no more again. Have we ever seen our homeland again? Do we even know where we're from? That's right. We don't. Read. And there you shall be sold unto your enemy. No, your friend. Your enemy. So God said once you get off them boats, you're going to be sold to your enemies. Who was we sold to? 
So who was our enemies according to the Bible? Right. Having they having not That's proven right. that they are enemies? In 2023, don't they still prove that they are enemies? Right. So that's true. For bond men, for slave men, read, and bond women, and slave women, read. And no man shall buy you. And no man shall buy you. Give me uh, 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 Jeremiah 17 and 5. You know what I'm saying? Real quick. Even thou should discontinue from thy heaven. Four. Four. Okay, come. I never, I never realized this until, like, it's like, it's like everything is like. On, right, it's spot on. It's so detailed. That's what I'm saying. The scriptures are so detailed to the life that we live in the uh, in the hood. Yeah. We killing each other, black on black crime, uh, single parent household, our eyes evil towards each other. You know what I'm saying? When we put in slavery, chains on our neck, serving our enemy to this day. You got a job? Yeah, Who you working for? Public. Who own it? <laughs> God said you gonna have to serve your enemy right. in the world of all things. Who face on the money? Right. So that lets you know he's in this rulership and you're a captive in this land. Yeah. That's why they can shoot you down in the street and they can go home. Right. 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 You know what I'm saying? Read that. Book of Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 4. Come on. And thou, right. even thyself, read, shall discontinue from thy inheritance that I gave thee. Right. So Jeremiah said we're going to discontinue from my heritage that God gave us. God gave us a heritage. And what he gave us is law statutes and commandments. Now, I got to ask you a question. If breaking the commandments got us in this situation and slavery, all that stuff happened to us, what must we do to get out of the situation? If breaking them got us in it, what should we do to get out of it? Follow the, follow the, that's, that's right. right. Follow the commandments. See how easy that is? And that's what, that's what churches don't teach us. They tell you the law is done away with. No, we got to walk. What's wrong with me loving my brother as I love myself? What's wrong with that law? That? Nothing. That's right, because I ain't going to steal from you because I don't want you to steal from me. That's loving my brother as I love myself. I don't want your wife and I don't want you to want my wife. That's loving your brother as you love yourself. You know what I'm saying? Meaning if I don't like something being done to me, why would I do it to the next man? Mm -hmm. Don't that make sense? Yeah. That's loving your brother as you love yourself. Give me uh, uh, Leviticus 11 and 7. You know what I'm saying? And God gave us law of statute commandment. I'm going to give you a couple of law of statute commandment that you can start keeping. And follow, you know what I'm saying? How old are you, young man? I'm 21. 21. You're a young man. Could you grow your beard? No, it's just, I'm barely growing right now. It's okay, okay, okay. Beard. All praise, all praise. <laughs> Read that. Let's get them. Leviticus <laughs> chapter 11 and verse 7. Hey, go another commandment. Read. And the swine. And the what? And the swine. And the what? And the swine. What is swine? A pig. Right. Read. Though we divide the hook. Come on. And be cloven footed. Read. Yet he chewed not the cub. Come on. He is unclean to you. He is what? He, he is, is unclean to you. Now God say the swine or pork is unclean to you. You know what I'm saying? It meaning you should not be eating that. That's why our people have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, heart disease. That's where that comes from. Our people love eating pork. You see grandma in the, in the house sometimes her legs fall up real bad. That comes from eating pork all her life. See what I'm saying? You got to put away the pork. God made every creature for a certain purpose. And the pork, the pig, he made to clean up anything. That's why you pick anything in front of a pig, he'll eat it. That's right. And that's why you should not eat them things. I used to raise, I used to raise pigs. That's right. So you know, that's right. I used to be a farmer too. And my daddy used to raise pigs. And then anything you put in front of it. Because it's a garbage disposal. They eat anything. That's what God made it for. You know? Of their flesh shall you not eat. You should not eat their flesh. I mean, you can't eat ham. You can't eat bacon. You can't eat. Uh, pork chop, you can't eat them things. You know what I'm saying? That 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 is. You got good meat. You got beef. You could eat turkey, chicken, fish. You know what I'm saying? But certain kind of fish. Let me show you. That's in the Bible too. Read. Mm -hmm. And their carcass shall ye not touch. They are unclean to you. Read on. These shall you eat of all that are in the water. Now God's going to tell you, he said, these that you should eat, that's all in the water. Now he's going to tell you all the things that you can eat that come out of the water. Read. Whatsoever have fins and scales. What it got to have? Whatsoever have fins and scales. So he said, you can eat anything that come out the sea, as long as it have fins and scales. What do our people love that don't have fins and scales? Catfish. Right? What else? <laughs> Crab. Shrimp. Lobster, shellfish, crawfish. Don't want people love eating them things? Yeah. 
Grandma got that big old gumbo pot, they got pork in it, they got they got shrimp in it, all kind of stuff, don't it? Conk. Right, fight. Yeah, you feel what I'm saying? All you doing is tearing down your body when you eat them things, you know?